G'day guys, how's it going? It's Cody from CycleTravelOverload.com Coming to you guys with a video. Today we're going to be talking about touring bicycles and this is the top touring bicycles of 2019. So what I did, I went onto the interweb, just found like all of the best touring bikes. You know, I've been looking for myself to try and get, you know, an upgraded touring bike. One of my bike that I currently have is, is in this list as well. But um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So first off, so just quickly, the best touring bike is kind of subjective. So I guess it's the best for you as an individual. So you really got to think about a few things as in like where you're going to be traveling, the type of terrain, how long you're going to be traveling for, are you going to be traveling light or with a heavy load, like bike packing style or cycle touring sort of style. Um, that's going to sort of indicate um, construction of the bike in terms of its material and steel is for touring and you might want alloy or something like that for a bit more of a lighter setup for bike packing. Okay, so these aren't in any particular order. So the first bike is the Surly Long Haul Trucker or the Surly Disc Trucker. This is a bike I have. I have the LHT and I've had it for a few years now and I bloody love the thing. It's just a really tough and rugged machine that can pretty much take you anywhere. It is actually designed to be a road touring bike with a little bit of off-road sort of capabilities and stuff, but I've converted mine to a gravel grinder in a way and I've put on some wilderness tires. I've been exploring through forests on like rugged gravel off the beaten path road and it's just been holding up really well. But the Surly, it comes in a 4130 chromoly steel frame with heaps of island so you can mount like heaps of stuff on it. It also gives you the choice to chuck on some fatter tires like I have done. They have this fatties fit fine thing on the on the side of the frame indicating that you can chuck on, you know, some wider tires allowing you for a clearance of up to 2.1 inches. And um, the LHT also does come with rim brakes. The difference in the disc trucker is the disc trucker. It has disc brakes, which is $300 more expensive in retail price. Yeah, so the prices are for the LHT, it's $1,350, this trucker is $1,550. But also guys, if you do want a review of the Surly Long Haul Trucker, I have written my experience over at cycletraveloverload.com. I'll have a link down below for that article if you want to check that out. But the next bike is the Kona Sutra. So I must say, this is a beautiful looking touring bike. It's made again from chromoly steel. The frame does come stock with a comfortable Brook saddle, the B17 Brook saddle. I have this saddle myself and it's like sitting on a couch. It's that comfortable. Cork bar tape, bark on shifters, it comes with fenders or mud guards and racks as well, which is a really cool thing about this bike. So it comes standard with a rear rack and it also comes with Shimano Dior 3x10 drivetrain. So it gives you that maximum gearing so you can haul heavy loads up, up really steep hills with ease pretty much. It also comes with a smooth rolling WTB STI 23, 36H WTB rims as well, making this rig pretty much ready out of the box for or any kind of bike touring adventure you throw at it. So this Kona is quite popular with many bike tourers. I asked a lot of bike tourers, you know, what's your current rig and what you're riding in. And this was one of those ones that are up there. Like heaps of people are riding these bikes at the moment and they're really, really pleased with this bike's capability to stand up with all of the abuse and, and use that the bikes cop on bicycle tours. The 2020 model comes in in just under $1,700 while you can pick up the 2019 model for $1,560. All right, so the next bike on the list is the Salsa Marrakesh. So this is another touring bike option that is highly recommended for bicycle tourers. This thing's built for world touring and rugged exploration. It features a Shimano Dior drivetrain, uh, a Sunrace CSM90 with a nine speed. It comes by 11 by 34 tooth with Shimano three times nine bar and shifters. So this one is a stock bar and shifter. Um, the, the previous ones do have bar and shifters as well. So most of the touring bikes in this list do. A couple that I'm mentioning don't. Typically a really common trait amongst touring bikes is to have those bar and shifters, but a few of these bikes on the list are, they're kind of the furthest away from being a touring bike while still being a touring bike in a way. They're essentially categorized as off-road adventure touring bikes or something like that. They're kind of um, still in this category and I've been finding myself personally to be moving more towards the off-road sort of touring and stuff and it's kind of what I like most so I really wanted to include a few of those bikes in this list too. Comes with the Salsa Cow Chipper ha handlebars which are a wider sort of drop bar like a flare drop bar. These bars also provide an upright and relaxed riding position on the tops and the hoods for, you know, riding all day. So this bike's available for $15.99 or you can just pick up the frame set by itself for $799. So the next bike is a really, really cool bike. It's a Trek 520. 
This thing is kitted out to be the optimal bicycle touring machine. It comes with front and rear racks. And again, it's another bike that is set to go. This one is like more dedicated to being a full-fledged touring bike. But the only difference with this one is it doesn't come with the bar end shifters. But I do really like the front rack and the way, you know, you could probably, probably put on a randonneur front handlebar. I'm not too sure though if it'll fit between the handlebars that are given on this bike. But it has that platform front rack. And I just love the design of the front rack. It just looks so really, really cool. They've been building these since 1983. You know, it has a lot of track record and a lot of history and they haven't changed much since they built the first one in 1983 so and it has that reliability in terms of them not wanting to really change too much about the bike because it's obviously working right so it comes equipped with a chromoly steel frame alloy disc touring fork it comes with a, a pretty wide range of gears with a 27 speed drivetrain so again that's going to be great for getting you up hills on a fully loaded bike shimano saw a brake and shifter levers it comes with bond traeger tubeless ready wheels puncture resistant tires with the reflective sidewalls on there as well. And it also comes with disc brakes as well. So the Trek 520 comes in at $14.99.99. So the next one is a Massey Giramondo. This is a pretty nice touring bike. Again, it comes with front and rear racks already out of the box. And these racks are premium quality. They're like the highest end racks you can pick up. They're the tubus rack, really highly recommended racks. They're just bloody great. So the frame is constructed from a double butted chromoly TIG welded tubing. Um, the tire clearance capabilities for this is two inches with tubeless ready rims with a 23 millimeter internal width. So Massey, it does continue to make an impact in the fast evolving adventure cycling scene. So according to Massey's website, it's designed for distance and it's a road ready companion for long days and heavy loads. Coming in at around $13.99, it's pretty good value considering again like what racks come with this thing. It's the Tubus Tara Lowrider rack at the front paired with the Tubus Cargo rack at the rear. And the total value for these two racks is 260 bucks, so that alone adds some significant value to the bike. All right, so the next bike I have for you guys is a bit more of a budget friendly bike. If you guys are looking for budget-friendly touring bikes, I wrote another article over at cycletraveloverload.com where I listed a whole heap of bikes under $1,000 that are really good touring bikes. So make sure to check that out. But this Marin Four Corners touring bike is a pretty good touring bike. I had to chuck it into the list here because it's budget friendly as well. So it only comes in at $769. It comes with Shimano Sora 3x9 speed drivetrain. It comes with mechanical disc brakes with some WTB 700x43 tires. Depending on the bike size that you do choose, it also comes in a 650B option as well. But all in all, this is a pretty value bike for the price. And the specs on this thing are pretty darn good for the price range. So the next one is the Fuji Touring Bike. They have the disc version like the Surly and the Rim Brake option as well. So the Rim Brake one is cheaper coming in at $999. Built from a Reynolds 520 Chromoly steel frame. It offers durability. Out of the box, it comes with a rear rack. Gives you options to mount fenders. Triple bottle cage mounting options as well. It comes with the Shimano Dior T675 center lock disc hub. If you choose a disc option, that's a little bit more expensive. Coming in at $1,199. Okay, so the next bike... It's what I'm really super excited about. I've been looking at this one and, and I think it's probably one of my favorite ones in this list. It's the Trek 920. It's an adventure mobile. It's like a really good bike to take on an off-road adventure. It's one of the best bikes in this list for just jumping on, heading out into the wilderness and just trying to find all that solitude. So again, this is like the furthest from a touring bike while still sort of officially being a touring bike. It's not only capable for taking you on road touring bike adventures, but it's also more than capable of taking you off-road bike packing expeditions and, and other, you know, touring sort of style riding that's off-road as well. So Trek have essentially described this as a go-anywhere adventure touring bike. It comes built with drop bars and 29er mountain bike wheels. So the Trek 920 is, is essentially an aluminium bike made from a 100 series alpha aluminium frame with alloy forks as well. Comes with a 2x10 SRAM mountain drivetrain with integrated SRAM double tap hydraulic brake and shift levers. So again, the Trek 920, it's not the most budget friendly bike. It's a bit more expensive coming in at around $2,100. While you can also pick up the frame set, 
for around $900. So the next bike is a Genesis Tour de Fur 30. It's a really flashy looking touring bike that comes stock again with front and rear racks. It's pretty cool cause Genesis described this bike as pretty much the bike you'd turn to if you were to quit your job and embark on an impromptu pedal powered world tour. So it's made from a Reynolds 725 heated treated chromoly steel frame, including no nonsense components, so this thing is, is equipped, man. Like, this thing's ready to go. So Genesis have proven this with their own personal experience and, and toured on the on their own bikes, pretty much. And they've uh, essentially created these bikes that are tour and pretty much expedition-worthy. So they're just guaranteed vehicles to take you around the world by bike. Not my words, this is theirs. Comes with Shimano Tiagra 3x10 speed. A really cool feature about this is it comes stock with an SP Dynamo hub with a B and M front and rear light setup. Coming in at around 1,800 pounds, which is about $2,245. So guys, that's it for my top touring bikes. I have a few more listed in the article that I've based this video around. So if you wanna check out that article, head over to cycletraveloverload.com. I'll have all links down below so you can check that out. But once again, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.